Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have three brand new stories for you, starting with a short one about a lawsuit between a husband and a wife. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Don't ever get caught cussing out a female judge. On the advice of my attorney, I started recording all calls with my ex during the divorce process. Indiana, at least at the time, was a single-party consent state, meaning only one person in the conversation had to know it was being recorded. The look on her face when I hit play and the judge got to hear her say, I don't give a F what that B judge says, you get visitation when I say you get visitation, was absolutely priceless. Can you say contempt of court? I got everything I wanted out of the divorce with the judge landing on my side for any contentious claims. She even made my ex pay for my attorney fees. And our second story. You don't care if we get robbed? Fine. My dad has a really bad habit of leaving the doors unlocked, all of them. The front door and the two back sliding doors, one in the living room and one in the master bedroom. He does this because he primarily works from home important detail later, and likes to go in the backyard to smoke, so locking the doors all the time is quite tedious for him. He leaves the house every now and again to replenish his cigarette supply or to get lunch, and he always leaves the doors unlocked. This triggered my anxiety, as around the time we moved in, there had been a robbery at one of our neighbor's houses because they left the back door open for their dog and left the house real quick to pick up a child from school. They had been gone for 10 minutes, and when they returned, the mom's jewelry box and expensive watch had been stolen. So obviously, I wanted the doors to be locked, especially when no one was home, even for a moment. When I'm home with someone else there, I feel a little more at ease, but at night I always triple check to make sure the doors are locked, because he doesn't lock them then either. So I also have to sneak into the master bedroom when my parents are asleep, just to make sure their stupid sliding door is locked. One day, I had gone out with a friend for the entire day and had reminded my parents that I would likely be back pretty late. We left my house around 11 a.m., and he dropped me off at 9 p.m. When I got out of his car, I realized my mom's car was there, but not my dad's. They only take my dad's car when they're going out for a while. I got a bit nervous, but trusted that my mom would have at least checked to make sure the doors were locked before they left, but nope. I get to the front door and looked in the small crevice of the wall in the door to see if the lock was in the wall. It wasn't. I go inside, and guess what? Neither of the back doors were locked as well. I got mad. I mean mad. I texted my mom immediately asking how long they'd been out and how long they were planning on staying out. She texts back the times, and steam started blowing out of my ears. They'd been gone since 2 p.m. and were not likely to come back till near midnight. The house could have been completely stripped of literally all of our belongings in that amount of time. I call her and start shouting that I'd just gotten home and all the effing doors were unlocked. She panics in response and asks if anything is out of place. After a quick run through the house, I deduce that nothing seemed to have been taken, so no one must have noticed. She sighs in relief and says that she asked my dad to lock all the doors before they left, and she would talk with him about it now. When they get back, my dad is very angry at me and starts yelling at me saying, this is my house, I do what I want, yada yada yada. When I protest that we could have been robbed, he decides to show off just how big his ego is and say, honey, look at me. Nobody would dare rob the house when I'm living in it. Everyone here is scared of me. I stood there staring at him. My jaw dropped, and it was at that moment I wondered how my mom fell for this moron. He puts on the, ha, I've won smirk, and then says, nobody's brave enough to rob this house, relax. Fine, I'll relax. For the next couple weeks, I make sure I go out of the house as much as possible, usually to my previously mentioned friend's house. And I'd always take all my valuables with me, being my laptop, my 3DS and all of its games, my Nintendo Switch, and some of my expensive jewelry. The reason for this is because my parents like going out together when I'm not home because they feel they'd be obligated to bring me with them. I told my friend what was going on, and they suggested leaving my valuables at his house so I don't have to bring them with me everywhere I go, to which I happily obliged. And then it finally happened. As I mentioned before, my dad works from home. His office, it's just a large desk with two laptops and two monitors, was in the living room near the sliding door. 
His work was primarily done on a laptop that cost well over $900. He'd tweaked and added some things to it to make it even better than it was previously. I'm not very tech savvy, so I'm not 100% sure what exactly he did to improve it. The other laptop was about $500, which he used mostly for personal stuff. So one day I ran out of paper in my journal and decided to walk to the local Walmart, which was about 10 minutes away, to buy a new one. My mom was at work and my dad was likely out getting lunch, so I left the empty house, carelessly leaving the doors unlocked. I took my sweet butt time walking to that Walmart, the usual 20 to 30 minute walk to and from there, taking about an hour and 15. When I got to the final crosswalk to cross the street to my community, my phone rang. It was dad. He's in a panic saying he couldn't find his laptops. They weren't on his desk or in his bags or anywhere else he could have left them. He asked me if I'd seen them. I tell him, I saw them on your desk before I left. Are you sure they're not there? After a long pause, he asked me where I am and I told him I was walking back from Walmart. He didn't know that I'd taken the scenic route back home, so he thought that in the span of 20 or so minutes, someone had come into the house and unplugged both his laptops from the monitors, taking them, the chargers, and his spare cash in one of the drawers. When I got home, he'd gone to our neighbor's houses asking if they'd seen anyone go into the house. All but one said no. That one told him they'd seen a man enter the house through the sliding door to the living room and leave, but she thought it was my dad since she'd seen him frequently leaving the house through the back doors when he goes out, especially during the past few weeks. My dad looked like half of his soul had been sucked out of his body by Satan himself when he found this out and came back, and it was lots of fun watching him explain to my mom why his laptops, spare cash, and my mom's iPad were missing. Some calls to the police were made, the neighbor described what the man was wearing to the police, and after the police questioned some other neighbors, one that lived close by to the gate had said they clearly saw a man with the clothes described walking out of the community with a large bag. After about two weeks of searching, the police found the man and he was arrested. The laptops and my mom's iPad were returned, but my dad's personal laptop had been factory reset, the iPad screen was cracked, and the money was gone. The doors always stayed locked after that. And our last story. Say goodbye to your money. I used to manage a convenience store and we hired this woman. Let's call her Evil Whore, or EW for short. EW looked good on paper, but she was not a nice person. EW worked mornings with a lady I will call Anne. Anne's son John worked afternoons with me. One day, John told his mom something rather surprising, and his mom, shocked, confided in E.W. By the end of the week, E.W. had outed John to the rest of the staff and embellished how Ann found out to include her walking in on John and another guy. Fortunately, the staff loved John and rallied around him. But what a nasty thing to do. In addition to being a B, E.W. was also an alcoholic. One time she brought her six-year-old son to work where he spent the balance of the day whining that he wanted a lemon drop. Finally, a co-worker, a sweet girl who liked to make people happy, bought a bag of lemon drops for the kid who informed her that she must be stupid because a lemon drop is vodka, lemon juice, and sugar. Anyway, although things started out all right, everything eventually got to the point where if we scheduled EW to work on a Monday morning, she failed to show up a full 50% of the time. It had been about six months since we hired her, which coincidentally was how long she needed to work before being eligible for unemployment benefits again when we stopped scheduling her for the 6 to 2 shift on Mondays. We gave her the 11 to 3 instead, which obviously resulted in her losing some hours. EW did not like that. It was about 11 o'clock at night, and I was at home when my phone rang. It was EW drunk and yelling at me about her hours. She called me a stupid B a few times and kept repeating a simple mantra, fire me, fire me, fire me. So I eventually hung up, and I called my boss and told her what happened. We talked a bit and decided EW was more trouble than she was worth, so I called her back and said, I've thought it over, EW, and I've decided to take your advice and fire you. Goodbye. But that isn't the revenge bit. The revenge is when she filed for unemployment. I know a bit about how bureaucrats work, so I decided she wouldn't be getting unemployment benefits this time around, we contested her claim and gave the unemployment office my contact information. When they called, they asked me why I'd let her go. It went something like this. Unemployment guy. EW says you cut her hours. Can you explain why this happened? Me. 
Well, EW does a good job when she's there, but unfortunately, I think she has an alcohol problem. She hasn't been dependable on Monday mornings, so we decided to let her sleep in. UG. But she was a good employee other than that? Me. Yes and no, she's good at work, but she outed a gay co-worker to the whole company last month, and the last straw was when she called me at home and started swearing at me. She called me a B while I was in my own home. I don't have to put up with that. I was in my living room, and she's yelling at me saying, Fire me, you stupid B. And I'm not going to be called a B in my own home. UG. Wait, she asked for you to fire her? Me. Yeah, while calling me a B in my own home, no less. UG. But she said the words, fire me. Me. Over and over again. But seriously, I don't need to be called a B in my own home. UG. But she asked to be fired. Okay, I think you've answered my questions. Thank you. I hung up with a huge grin on my face. It was a week or two before the letter from unemployment came. EW was denied and would have to get a job. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.